Hey kids, this is Jurassic James, and on this Jurassic James Explains, we go over Irritator. So first and foremost, same rules as before, oldest to youngest. I only have two though, They're, it's a very rare uh, genus in toy form. And we go over his family as well. Now with Irritator, the first thing you notice is its name. And the cool thing about that is, I actually found this dinosaur, not through a scientific paper, but actually I was looking online for new toy species, and I, and I saw this guy. And I said, Irritator, that's a really, really weird genus name. So I look into it more, and it turns out um, there's two things. First, there is a paleontology black market. People who are not scientists, who are not doing it legally, who will dig up fossils and try to sell them to like rich people and stuff. Well, it turns out they found an Irritator skull, the front part of the skull, and they created the rest of it like a resin or material. And they sold it, and it kind of passed a few hands, and eventually a paleontologist got a hold of it, and as... They were working on it, trying to take off the part that wasn't fossil bone, the back of the skull. They realized that it was, it was like this other resin material, and it was so annoying that the genus name is Irritator. And I first found this with, my, with this guy here, the uh, Collect A model right there. So it was the only Irritator I had for a long time. Uh, it's, relative, it's relative to a Spinosaurus found in Brazil, which is why I have the globe here. Uh, when I teach classes with kids and I, and I talk about geography, I say, who likes geography? And I like 30 kids, only two or three put their hands up. Then I say, who wants to travel one day? And then all the hands go up almost. And I'm like, well, you, how do you know where to go when you travel if you don't know geography? And then the teachers are each share, you know? So I am in North America on, well, this, this is a uh, globe of the earth. Uh, I am on North America right now filming this. I'm somewhere right about there in Houston. The Irritator is from Brazil, basically. So it's a dinosaur from Brazil, which means that we don't really find them much anywhere else, just that one region. And this, and again, when you first hear about it, the first thing I want to point out, though, actually, other than a name, was that uh, the misidentification. So what's going on is very simple. They first found it, they thought it was a pterosaur. And I always, when I'm reading these scientific papers on skeletons, I'm always like, how do they find one animal and think it's something totally different? But then I thought about it in my actual training, right? And if you look at a tiger, a lion, a cheetah, a leopard, yeah, they're sufficiently very different. They have spots and, and stripes and different things. Their skulls are very similar, actually. So um, just a size difference. So for the, for the average biologist, not, not a specialist in big cats, I can, you would probably not be able to tell them apart as well if you didn't know the size difference, really, right? So I can see why this happened. But in the case of Irritator, they thought it was a pterosaur, a flying pterosaur. So one thing to point out is that in the Cretaceous period, there were a lot of pterosaurs in Brazil. They're, just, they're known for this, actually. They fall in the limestone muds, get fossilized and buried. You know, it's really, it's really great for that fossil type. Well, it turns out here that they found, thought it was a pterosaur. And I remember thinking it's still kind of weird, but I remember looking at the sketches and everything. It's, okay, I can see the parts they have there, how it's very similar. It's very narrow and everything. Spinosaurus have, this is a Spinosaurus family. They have very narrow uh, snouts. So anyway, fast forward, I had not planned to do this animal for a long time. But last summer they came out, uh, Jurassic World, uh, I believe it was Mattel, came out with the Irritator model here like that. And I was like, well, I, I got to have that, you know. And I remember I was super excited. And my wife was like, why are you so excited? And it's like, it's an irritator. It's like, you, they don't just make these. <laughs> you have thousands, well, hundreds of triceratops and stegosaurus models. We don't have irritators. So uh, in general, looking at this guy here, close or actually she's this gal, she's from Jurassic World. Uh, the first thing I'm going to point out is overall fine. Proportionally, overall fine. Concerns, of course, the tail is too small. With dinosaur toys in general, the tails are always too small. I've noticed that like 100% of the time. And the idea behind that, I think, is because they're packaging. It's, it's an engineering thing where they want to give them a package, but the tail should be a lot thicker for any spot, and not just irritator, for any dinosaur, particularly Spinosaurus. Uh, but the skull itself overall and profile looks pretty neat. The only problem I have with it mainly, if you look at it head first, that should be very, uh, like a very narrow jaw, like very, like, you know, for hunting for the fish. And again, the nostrils being further back of the skull, that's great. I like that a lot. But the Spinosaurus all have that. The crest on his head, I'm don't recall that being in the picture of the paper, but I'm not saying it's not on the picture. But again, we see this in Spinosaurus itself, his cousin. Uh, the, of course, the Spinosaurus name comes from these high neural spines on the back. So here's a fun thing. On your back, if you touch it, there's little bumps there. These are essentially, uh, for a Spinosaurus, they're six feet tall. So these guys are a little bit shorter, obviously. So it's a smaller cell. Uh, uh, yes, on that note, I, I personally am not fond of the, uh, the, the uh, sound dinosaur toys that you know it's really kind of i mean for, they're for kids i get it but just for me personally it's like oh, okay because you hit them and or you at night they're making noises uh so this there's like the the, the spines going up are called neural spines the things going down on the bottom are called chevrons uh there's 
to my knowledge, no dinosaur known with the chevrons going out and having this projection of skin like this. Uh, well, Spinosaurus video previously, but other than that, really, but even with the projection, it just it's this is very unique and different. But now, new science, who knows? But I doubt the toy designers knew that when they made this guy. So one thing to point out too is that in your foot, the, when you walk, uh, there's the toes, the phalanges, and the part, the arch of our foot is kind of metatarsals. So the foot for dinosaurs is really this part right, this whole thing here. They walk on their toes, it's called uh, digigrade, whereas we as primates, uh, assuming you're a human, walk on our heels, which are plantigrade. So obviously this little bit of fleshy part here has been kind of added because of uh, balancing and engineering. Uh, there would have been flesh under the foot a little bit. You know, we see the padded footprints of dinosaurs before. Again, spinosaurs are kind of different. So, you know, until we find that footprint or find that whole foot, we can't say for sure. But I know that this is probably more extra for balance, basically. The hands are great because they are palm to palm. That's very important that dinosaurs, you know, the, the, the predatory dinosaurs have palm to palm hands. Uh, there are three claws, which is a pretty standard issue for the spinosaurus group. Often we'll see they have a bigger first claw. Uh, this one doesn't show that, but again, we don't have the animal hands. We can't say. Uh, anyway, but really cool guy. Overall, I like the fact that it has like a scaly texture to the skin. And the idea is that, yes, dinosaurs have feathers, but not all dinosaurs have proof of feathers. And it would have made very little sense for these uh, spinosaurus types to have a lot of feathers. They're they're living in the water. They're, and you say, well, James, there's birds in the water. Fair enough. But given their placement on a dinosaur family tree and dinosaurs in relation to birds and reptiles, it's, 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 you know, it's, it would make more sense to say it would have this kind of scale pattern to live in the water and do what it's doing. I'm not saying it didn't have feathers. I'm just saying this isn't totally wrong based on our projections and theories. Uh, last thing to point out the foot is that there are the first, the three toes, very nice. And we have here the little dew claw, the little tiny claw there that they, they have, uh, in general, predatory dinosaur, predatory dinosaur toes. The toes are often put the same size, the middle toe being slightly longer. If you look at any footprint, the middle toe is usually very much longer. But, you know, again, we don't have a foot, so we can't say. But again, this is Brazil's finest. Now, who is this guy in this family? I'm, I'm going to use the Jurassic World models as their relatives. So Irritator, I said earlier, is from Brazil. This is Brazil, North America. Uh, he has a cousin called Sucomimus. Now, Sucomimus seen here, for the Jurassic World style. Uh, very similar design, the, you know, cell on the back like that. That guy's found in Africa. So we have Africa here, and right about there, the country called Niger. It's from Niger, Africa. That is where Sukumimus is from. Sukumimus means uh, crocodile mimic because of the long snout and, you know, overall features. Then we have, if I reach back further, a guy named Baryonyx, who's the most well, not well known, the most well studied of the, of the Spinosaurus family. Uh, this guy initially was found in Britain, actually, so a European Spinosaurus. Um, put that right there, and, and put that right there. And of course, the most famous member of the group, Spinosaurus herself. There she is. You know, there she goes, there she goes again. So that's a song from a long time ago, kids. So uh, the idea here is that these are all Spinosaurus. Of course, Spinosaurus, was, as we mentioned in the last video, was found in, well, Egypt and Morocco, so North Africa. So for this guy to be a Spinosaurus in Brazil, you're like, that's kind of weird because you would associate that Africa and Europe are close together and Brazil's far away. But there's this ridge right here that's about 150 million years old. And that sh that's that's a mid-oceanic rift where it's pushing the continents apart. You can actually measure North America and uh, Africa going apart about an inch a year. And the idea is that this would have been closer 110 million years ago, roughly. So you would have had a closer relationship between like these two guys as far as locality. Um, so it's not unusual to find Spinosaurus. It would make it, when I first read about it, to find it in Brazil wasn't like shocking, you know. Anyway, that being said, this is a guy, and as far as his environment goes, he's found a lot of pterosaurs, and the only one that I can find a toy of is this little pterosaur here, and pterosaurs are of course for flying reptiles, and they will get their own video on their introduction in different species one day. But again, this guy was actually found in the exact same um, strata of rock that's been aged throughout Brazil, they were found in the same time frame. So they would have been contemporaries, most likely. There are many other pterosaurs, but they didn't come with toys, so I can't show them to you. But in general, you're seeing Irritator. Pretty cool guy. You should appreciate him. You should get him. He's really cool. I mean, he's rare, right? Thank you guys very much. See you next week.